Welcome to another edition of Pastor Kumui's Illustrations. And if you are going to do the work of the Lord, you need conviction. Conviction. Thus says the Lord. Many years ago, I remember, when we just started in deeper life, and we believed in the Bible that says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Of course, there was opposition. But without conviction, standing and saying, here is where we stand. We wouldn't have been where we are today. I remember many years ago when we taught evangelism, personal evangelism. And we told all those young people and we said, go ahead and evangelize. Without conviction, that would be impossible. I remember many years ago when we began to teach our people that sickness is not from the Lord. That he says, I am the Lord that healeth you. And that God will not give his children sickness. I received some opposition in some quarters. But you know, without conviction, a man will not be able to continue. I was in Britain just uh, last month at the um, Assemblies of God Home Missions. And I was given opportunity to preach a number of times on church growth. Different areas of church growth. And um, I talked on no divorce and remarriage. Of course I knew before I ever got there. And some people had even spoken to me individually about ministers divorcing their wives and taking new wives. And had spoken to me about marrying people that had been divorced in the churches. But I have strong conviction on what the Bible says. And I went ahead and preached with strong conviction. Now, if I didn't have conviction, I wonder, if I say what I wanted to say, the people may not invite me back again. But what if you are not invited back again? I have enough to do in Nigeria. If I'm not invited back again, that gives more opportunity to go to many churches that are even saying, why remain in deeper life alone now that we're having conferences among churches? Why not come to our church? If they don't invite me there, that gives me more opportunity here. And because of that, I gave them the conviction. The other thing that makes preachers afraid is that, what if they don't give me offering? If I tell the truth, but who needs an offering in any case? Because if we ruin our ministry for the, case, for the sake of an offering, you yourself will be an offering on the altar of the world. But if you have a strong conviction and you know that this is thus says the Lord and you stand upon that conviction, then the Lord will carry you through and you will not fail. But do you know, instead of those people not inviting me back again, they did. In fact, there are more invitations than I can honor. Because I told them what I have learned from the Bible. I got to a Bible school in Britain, and there are so many of them there. And um, the Christianity over there is uh, different from the Christianity over here. And uh, while I was speaking to all the students, I said, now you are going out. And you are going to preach the gospel. And then I told them about Bible stand on restitution. You stole somebody's shirt. And you are still wearing that shirt. And then you go out preaching the gospel. And that shirt is still on you. Return his shirt before you give him the gospel. And then when I finished, some of them were asking questions. I said, that is the Bible. And eventually when they were asking too many questions, their principal rose up and said, well, students... It's only that you're asking the questions because you have not been taught in this school. You'll see that this minister from Africa, he referred to the Bible in everything that he said. That is, the only problem is because you have not been taught. And they kept quiet. But suppose I had no conviction. We must have conviction. And whatever you are doing in the church, make sure that you are not going to please men. You are not going to please the Canaanites or even the Israelites. You will say, oh Lord, you have called me and I will not disappoint you. Do you know if you take that decision, God will back you up. The power of God will support you. And you will never fail in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are becoming too quiet. 
Have I stepped on your toes? Are you still happy with me? You must be happy. We are men of strong conviction. Now, therefore, that is why that God told Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. Many of the things that God told Joshua to do, if he didn't have courage, how will he do it? They had just been defeated in Ai. And he went before the Lord and said, Oh Lord, why is it this has happened unto us? And God said, There is sin in the camp. And he began to find out. And it was Achan that had taken that sin. What were they to do? God said, Get rid of him. That takes conviction. In the church, to discipline people that sin in the church, it takes conviction. That's why some churches don't grow. Because there are some people over there, they will commit adultery in the church, they commit fornication in the church, and then when you want to touch them, and you want to say, well, elder, you have been an elder in our church, but now look at what you did. He said, yes. How about David? Didn't David commit adultery? And you say, are we going to fill the whole church with David committing adultery? Now, we're going to take the eldership away from you. Ah, he said, if you do it, I will break this church. You think you're a pastor? I will show you I'm an elder. And then you sound the opinion of some elders and you say, Elder, did you hear the story of uh, so-and-so elder? And they say, yes, we heard. And then you go to another person, did you hear this? Yes, we heard. I'm thinking that I want to take a serious stand against that elder. He must be disciplined. And the older elder said, if you do it, young man, this church will break. Ah, elder, who has been in this church for 50 years, you want to discipline him? Okay, go ahead and break the church. All the property of the church will take everything away. You will go out of this church empty handed and go and start another ministry. And then, uh, then you see the elder that committed the sin. And you say, hmm. Anyway, God will catch you. <laughs> Pastor is not able to catch you. It's only God that can catch elder. It takes conviction. For you to understand that if Satan is standing behind them, God is standing behind you. And that if you go ahead and do the will of God, they may shout, they may cry, but you will overcome. And you will stand like the rock of Gibraltar. And you will say, here is where I stand. In this church where God has made me a pastor, Achan must be disciplined. You know, when you do that, First of all, in the first week, some people will be going around, maybe they will be gossiping. But you are on your knees praying. You are saying, God, vindicate yourself. Glorify yourself. And eventually, all those people, if God needs to give them a dream, if God wants to just smite them down like Saul on the way, of, to, to, on the way to Damascus, God will do something. They will come and bend the knee before you. But it takes conviction and courage that this is where I stand in Israel. Joshua needed to understand that if they brought in another part of traditional worship from all the things they learned from Canaan, Joshua must stand, not only dividing the land to them, but making sure that the religion of Israel remained pure. And he will stand against idolatry coming from any direction. But sometimes in our churches, You are a pastor in the church. And a young man will go to a fellowship somewhere and come back to the church to introduce something that has a smack of idolatry. Something that is not completely New Testament. And while he's doing that thing, you want to talk, but he's a youth pastor. He forgot that you put him there. And all the youth in that place, they forgot that you put them there. And then uh, eventually you call this youth uh, leader and you say, youth leader, I'm the pastor in this church. The way you are leading these uh, young people, you are leading them astray. Look, you brought in this idea, you brought in this idea, you brought in this idea. And this young person might say, yes, pastor, old men, uh, they won't understand. But today, today is the time for young people. 
And that's what they're doing in America, doing in Britain, and doing all over, all over the world. Therefore, that's what we're going to do. And you tell them that according to the Bible, and I'm the pastor here, this will not be done. And he says, ah, Pastor, if you uh, do that, if you take that stand, I'm going to take all the young people. Before it happens, I will tell you. I'll take all the young people and start another fellowship with them. Pastor, what are you going to do? Are you in control? To the point you'll be able to say, young man, if you do that, God will teach you a lesson. And it will show you that there is a pastor here appointed of God. And that he will back up the pastor he has appointed. And therefore you have control. Because you are watching over their souls as somebody that will give account. But you know, if we don't have convictions like this, there will be no courage. And they will be pushing us here and there. I hope you have been blessed by this edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Please don't let this illustration die. Pass it on to others and you could be of help to someone somewhere. Till we meet next week again for another edition of Pastor Kumui's illustrations. Remain blessed.